All right, everyone. Namaste ji. Welcome to the beautiful winter wonderland, Lahore. Uh, gorgeous, man. Gorgeous. What can I say? <laughs> so, you know, last year I didn't get a chance to come to Lahore because uh, I was in Goa for two months. And then from there, I just flew straight into Kashmir to Gulmar to go skiing. And uh, yeah, I had had my fill for snow, you know, so I never came back. This year, uh, we've got our first snowfall yeah, in December, which happened uh, just a few days back. And uh, we thought, you know, why not go on a nice little drive to uh, Lahore, check out what winter is like. Uh, I'll be honest, it is freezing out here. Minus five, I checked in my car. And uh, just generally, man, at night, it's going to go like anywhere from between minus 10 to minus 15. But uh, whatever, man, this is what we've come to experience, you know, do some nice little driving, maybe go all the way to Kilong, do some short little hikes and... Uh, yeah, just the quality of powder over here, man. Like it's, oh, the snow is so, it's like dust, it's like sand, you know, it just flows everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so we are in the very beautiful Sisu village and uh, man, it looks completely different. And this year we've actually come to Lahore probably like 30 times through the tunnel. Easily. 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 And uh, the first time crossing it in the winter, you know, things are frozen on both the sides. Uh, it's like a completely different place. <laughs> but uh, I'm really, really curious to know what the Sisu waterfall looks like and uh, I think we're the first ones actually going because there are no tracks over here yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's like a workout you can feel my calves burning with every step but I'm gonna channel my inner Nimzai <laughs> push it <laughs> listen <laughs> this is my 8000 meter feet okay <laughs> You can literally see the sunlight fading from my face guys, it is and the temperature is like dropping degree by degree with every second. Chal <laughs> Roni, let's go. Come, come, come. Let's go. Wanna have a cup of coffee? There's a new place over here, they've told me. That's okay. Anything. <laughs> let's go, run, run, run. run, 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 run. <laughs> No sugar, sugar on the side, and just like an Americano. Like an Americano. Yeah. Oh yeah, that played the spot proper. How was it? Oh, it was too good. Like <laughs> mala aagya, such me. Like seriously, like I can't even believe we have a coffee shop with a patisserie right here True. in Sisu, <laughs> which is awesome. Now all the Lahul needs is a really nice banging restaurant and scene set here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to write this piece for a while now and uh, this is as far as I've gotten. 
uh, and every day you know I spend at least half an hour in the morning you know trying to build it practice it perfect it and uh, the overall objective here is not really to write like a banger song you know that the world enjoys but more on the lines of getting completely lost you know uh, in your very own uh, self-expression and uh, I feel you know one is never too old to learn a new instrument and that's why I wanted to share a class with you on Skillshare that focuses strongly on learning the very basics of uh, arguably the most sexy instrument known to mankind. So the class is called Learn Guitar, the complete beginner's guide by Mark Barnacle. You have uh, 26 lessons in all and you learn everything that you need to get started right from how to put on the strings, how to tune the guitar, the correct way to hold a guitar, all the way to the basics of learning all the different chords and how these different chords work in relationship with each other. Uh, you then get into, uh, you know, learning simple strumming patterns, uh, different kinds of uh, plucking patterns and almost immediately you get into, you know, learning simple songs like Stand By Me or Perfect by Ed Sheeran, which I feel are really great songs to get started with. You also then get into slightly more advanced stuff like uh, what are different kinds of bar chords, you know, or the different kinds of scales and uh, how to use all of this to create your own music. And uh, that is the point of it all. Uh, you know, you can play other people's songs, you know, just to learn a few things here and there. But when you start creating your own music, that feeling, man, that feeling is what you're after. And uh, this class gets you going in that direction. So we've been using Skillshare for a while now and it's really helped us brush up on some of our skills and like learn a lot of new fun things. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community and a great space for anyone to pick up new skills, develop their passions and just like connect with other like-minded creators. You can choose from a wide range of classes on topics such as film and video, animation, music, bread making, bartending and even learn how to become an influencer. The browsing experience on their website is designed to recommend classes based on your creative interests. They even curate recommended lists of classes where you can really take a deep dive into the topic of your choice. The classes are divided into beginner, intermediate and advanced levels, so you can filter through them and get to the level that you want. Some classes even end with you working on like short projects that you can then upload to the platform, get feedback, have discussions. They even have classes by some Indian creators like Alisha Souza's illustration class and Ekta Chaudhary's gardening class. When you join Skillshare, you'll get an unlimited access to their entire library of classes for less than 2,000 rupees annually, which works out to like 166 bucks a month. I mean, that's cheaper than ordering home a pizza these days. So the first thousand people who join Skillshare using the link in the description will get a free one month trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the cold. Man, driving in Lahore during winter, what can I say man, it's, it's just another feeling. Man. Especially right now with the sunset happening and the valley is so narrow so the sun's gone in, out here but right in front of us like this the entire mountain is really lit up uh, it's gorgeous gorgeous man gorgeous 320 crazy okay guys so this is the other stop I usually make whenever I'm in Lahore the Beast Mountain crazy Completely frozen right now. Looks so different. Next level, bro. Next level. Made it to Kilong now. The only concern is the temperatures are going to go way below minus 8 and uh, diesel freezes at minus 8.1. So I'm 100% sure my car is not going to start early in the morning. We'll have to wait till the sun. We'll see it tomorrow, whatever happens. Happens. Shall we? Nims die, Nims die, Nims die. <laughs> <laughs> Mati is getting stronger year by year. She's becoming a mountain girl. Jileji, Jileji. Jileji, Jileji, Jileji. 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 Jileji, Jileji.
What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, so nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome, G. Thank you. Thank you, Chile. Chile. So good it's looking, yeah. Okay, full house tour tomorrow once we check it. Welcome to Kilong. It's a crisp minus two degrees <laughs> this morning, <laughs> but we are really nice and warm and cozy inside this beautiful mud house. This morning was like uh, quite a surreal sight to wake up to this gorgeous, gorgeous view outside our window where everything is just whitewashed in snow and it's just like this really beautiful winter wonderland kind of feeling. It touched maybe minus 15 last night maybe even lower i thought lahul would be an un uninhabitable place especially for someone like me like who's grown up in the city in bombay and who finds manali like bitingly cold you know but uh, i am quite pleasantly surprised and i think a large part definitely has to do with the fact that we spent the night in this mud house yeah like it really is so well insulated and so cozy and these boy these guys have also like tanzin and team have done it up so nicely that uh, like we were supposed to stay here one night and i think we're gonna extend our trip by another two or three for sure okay so uh, this place is uh, called zomsa it's in kelong and zomsa i think uh, in the tibetan language means a gathering and uh, that's exactly what happened uh, last night you know uh, it was so I was so happy, man, to see all the people who had helped uh, build this house come together, uh, different villages from uh, all around, you know, and uh, we sat together in, and we had such amazing conversations about uh, where Lahol is headed, you know, and in what direction everybody needs to go in. And these guys just constantly bringing you hot water in the beginning, and then you've got like butter tea coming in, and of course, man, after a while, you know, it comes down to the drinks. So we had some really nice country arak. Uh, we sat down, we danced. Oh my God, it was such a such a good feeling, and so cozy with the fire lit, and uh, just amazing people all around, you know. And I feel like uh, Tanzin and all are just doing such a great job when it comes to uh, taking local traditions, uh, local food, um, you know, all kinds of local handicrafts, and presenting it in this sort of a modern. Struck, uh, way you know so overall like if you really want to have that winter experience you know that living in complete negative temperatures Lahul is definitely the place to do it in December January Feb even March I would say and uh, within Lahul Zomsa is the place where you can do it comfortably like you know traditionally and uh, I can't wait to show you guys you know all around all right guys so let's go on a quick tour of the beautiful zomsa and i don't know how many of you remember but in april we were right here plastering these walls <laughs> and today it's like ready and up and running and i must say i'm actually really really impressed with the way they've got it going so let's go inside so as soon as you uh, come in through the door you enter this little foyer kind of area uh, where you have the dry toilet and a separate washing area and you have to take off your shoes because you're entering a traditional mud home and um, usually lahuli houses are actually built with a really low ceiling and that's because you want to trap as much warmth inside uh, so all you tall people just mind your heads all right so this is the main cafe museum chilling area and um, here we have <laughs> tanzin and Pallavi. 
What's up, guys? <laughs> so they are the Tanzan is the founder of uh, Zomsa and Pallavi is his business partner, and the both of them have been working really hard to get this place up and running and up to like international standards. <laughs> so all these artifacts that you see on display were actually found in the storeroom of this house, and they were lying forgotten, gathering dust and cobwebs for very many years. <laughs> and Tanzan and team have actually rummaged through all that stuff and salvaged all these pieces which are out here for you to see and it's really cool because you do get to get a glimpse into a time that is now kind of lost so these guys have four private bedrooms and a dormitory and the bedrooms range from like a single to this which is your premium room which is the fanciest room that they have this is exactly the room that we are sleeping in on the first floor and it's awesome because it comes with its own fireplace. They also provide you with radiators. So in case the fireplace is not enough for you, there is also a radiator to keep you going throughout the night. So this is the dorm room. I think they have about six bunk beds and one single bed. And I think if you're on a budget, this is a great place to crash. So now we're gonna go to the first floor. But before we do that, Aren't these the coolest? <laughs> mind your head, mind your head. Okay, so this is the first floor and uh, there are a bunch of rooms over here. This is the tiniest room that they have, which is ideally for a single person. It's occupied right now by a guy who's actually studying for his civil services exams. He's come to find Ekant in the mountains. <laughs> what better place? <laughs> I didn't see that earlier. Oh my god, this used to be in my Nana's house when I was growing up. That's it's a Dabba so cool. TV guys, it's a Dabba TV. <laughs> this is one of the smaller double bedrooms that they have. Also very cute. So now we're gonna go down this hallway, which has a bunch of rooms including ours, but it's really messy so we're not gonna go inside. <laughs> and I wanted to show you this lantern. It's again something they found in the house, but they've just had it rewired to get it working with electricity, which is pretty cool. And then this whole wall is covered in like photographs that they've found from way back when. Some of them I think are maybe like 100, 200 years old. And it's so beautiful to like actually see what Kilong looked like way back then, right? And finally out here we have this huge community space which uh, function can function as a co-work space people can conduct uh, workshops sometimes the villagers have some of their town meetings out here but what's really awesome is uh, that no matter what room you're staying in you're always gonna have like a gobsmacking view of these huge mountains of Lahore So Tanzan's also working on another initiative with the local women of Lahore where they make these beautiful woolen knit products. Uh, Ronnie and I are actually just doing some Christmas shopping right now and I thought I'd share this with you guys as well. Uh, these products come so beautifully packaged. It's called Garsha Looms. You can check it out on his Instagram page. Okay, what's happening? Today we were supposed to... Well, we were supposed to leave today and that is not happening. Yesterday we had like another Zomsa situation going on at night which went on till about 12 o'clock and all of a sudden these guys decided that tonight they're gonna throw a party for all the ladies in the town. That's who helped? Who helped, you know, build, build Zomsa. And now this has turned into like a big, big event. Right, so as you can see, it's absolute frenzy going on in the kitchen right now. Chopping, peeling, cleaning, smashing, all sorts of things. Everyone is coming to get ready for 6 p.m. this evening because that's when all the ladies are going to show up and it's like all hands on deck. How are you? 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 How are you?
आपने बनाया हम भी जरूर क्या है तो फिर आएंगे बिल्कुल जी कभी भी आप भी करें सर जी ने बुलाते रहना I think journey has been pretty adventurous for us the big responsibility on us was to you know stick to our vision right because uh, we have knocked doors to people for funding for everything but at last you know it is the community that came into action right we all came together as a team i so love it when people say to us that you know we feel like it's uh, dadi's home we feel like it's grandmom's home that we are visiting here and they love the vibe uh and they like to you know sit together because i think in cities that's what we have forgotten right we, we don't talk to each other uh, that's what people love here and that's why the name zomsa is zomsa means that people coming together right i haven't seen anyone going sad out of this place so that's the usp bye 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 गुड नाइट राम सी जी जो नेवा राम सी राम सी जी आ मार गोटे वरु